No. It didn't even like do that sizzle thing, so it's definitely not hot enough. Money. Money. The thumb method. back at the heart and soul of this beast. A lot of people will tell you it's the crank or maybe even the piston or cylinder. No, it's the e-start. Everybody knows, everybody buys KTM because it's got good e-start. Nobody wants to buy a KTM that's older. Because the e-start sucks. But this one is a pain in the butt to get in. Lifelong grease, Bell Ray. Buy one can, it'll last you a lifetime. <laughs> Well, we just dropped a video with this shit in there from two years ago. Same tub. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go, that's it. Bam. All right, so the battery is running low and the night is running thin. So we put the Bendix on the inside of the starter motor and a sleeve down in there and then put on the flywheel. Of course, the Woodruff pin is installed, and my camera's probably about to die, so this might be the last clip you get until tomorrow. Peace, y'all. Uh. All right, so what, what are we uh, what are we doing? What are we going on? Put a Loctite on our bolts, man. You're always gonna make sure you have Loctite on your bolts. And I don't know why they have Loctite down here. The threads are up here that are actually going in. So you want Loctite where the threads are interacting, not Loctite where no threads are interacting. Just doesn't Dumb. make any sense. <laughs> so you installed this already, right? Correct. Same thing with this. Put Loctite on it, tighten it down to six Newton meters. And this is the easy one. You know, just throw it in there. Make sure you got your spring oriented properly. Make sure you got your washers on there. Um, this is the part that gets to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Might have to ask Bud Dog to help me, but we'll see. So you gotta pull that out of the way, get this guy in there, and get it all lined up and tightened down. That should be enough, really. You don't wanna leave this spring tension on there when you're tightening it. You want it to be loose so that you're not messing up your threads. It's all aluminum, remember? Yup. There we go. So now that we got it in there good, we'll tighten it down to the correct torque, which is 10 Newton meters. All right guys, this might be a little unconventional. You might be screaming at me right now, but it'll work. We just gotta do something to keep this thing from rotating so we can get it down to the proper torque. There we go, that's it. Putting the shifting mechanism in. So we got our shift drum tightened down 10 Newton meters. Don't forget your washer, this goes on first. And then make sure all your bearings and everything are clean. Looks like they're getting greased by the internal engine oil, so that'll keep them lubricated. And just slide this back. Make sure you get the bottom shaft lined up with the bottom bearing. Push it through the hole. And there you go. And you want to double check and make sure that your transmission actually shifts. Which mine does, so. I mean, you're good. All right, guys, we're here. Threw a little bit of assembly lube on our sliding mating surfaces. We're gonna slide our counterbalancer shaft on in. Make sure you get your seal in there. There's a circlip on the back side of this seal. Make sure you get that in there as well. Putting our little tiny woodruff key in our balancer shaft. Trying not to drop it. All right, and after fighting with this freaking woodruff key for a few minutes, we got it in there finally. You gotta make sure you get it in there flat and level, otherwise you'll never get this gear on. It's got a key here. So, slide it on in there. You're good to go. And take your screw with your washer, a little bit of Loctite. Throw it in there. And we'll check the torque spec on that. Get it tightened down and we'll be back with you. All right, guys, so. Just in case you didn't know, there's a little hole in the case here. It's just the right size to stick a screwdriver in there. And you can use these little holes so that way you can actually tighten this thing down the proper torque without struggling too much. What's that torque again? 30 Newton meters, 22.1 foot pounds. 
put some long life grease, bell ray obviously, on our O-ring, put it around the main transmission shaft, put some grease around pretty much everything else. On here you just want to keep it sealed up, protected and greased. You can use this to get the O-ring all the way down. And then put that off to the side. Put some grease on this. Get our seal set in there. We'll work on driving it in. Take your next layer, pop it on in there. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw our dowel pin in. We're gonna time and align our primary drive gear to our balancer shaft. So, obviously, the dowel pin goes in. Hopefully, this is easy. Alright, so you gotta make sure you align your timing marks. A right there and B just right there. Dot to dot. Got a little spacer, throw that guy on there. Slap it on. Then we go with our needle bear. Slap it on. And we go with our fancy ass stock clutch basket. And we don't slap it on there, but gently slide it in place. Make sure it engages over here. Nice piece of dirt. Don't get that on film. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No dirt in this motor, I promise. <laughs> no, I Never been dirt in this motor. Never been dirt in this motor. <laughs> Never seen dirt. That's definitely not why it's apart right now. Our inner hub. Make sure you don't lose this little washer or something. <laughs> oh, I know it though. To it? Yeah, back to it. Alright, time to put the inner hub in. Make sure we don't forget about this little washer on the back side. It usually kind of holds in there because of all the oil. And be careful of all of these things because they can come out and fall in the trash. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> If you need to, you replace these things. This one's not too bad, so I'm just gonna reuse it. It's just on there, just enough for now. So make sure you remember that these things are reverse threaded. It's a little bit weird trying to line it up in reverse. Regular thread, reverse thread. back and re-torque spec those later on when we get the motor in the bike and when we get a torque wrench that goes up that high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one of the last pieces of the power valve is this little component. A little bit weird, so you can make sure it goes on like this. It can operate. So it slides in there. And when you mount this thing, there's two, there's two little collars right here and they slide right into the groove, so you'll know you have it mounted properly when it sits on there. So I can just fix it. Get locked tight on the bolts, tighten them down to six newton meters. This is where it gets a little technical. We gotta make sure that we get our Z-gap correct. So, when we install our cylinder, we put our gaskets on, we install our cylinder, we put our piston in, and then we measure our gap between the top of the cylinder and the top of the head. And you've got to get that measurement correct, and that's controlled by how many gaskets you put on there. So it's kind of hard to tell when you're putting a new motor together exactly how many you need. So I measured the old one, and I measured these. So I'm assuming that it's going to be a little bit longer, so I'm hoping that these two will compensate for the new parts. And We'll put it together, check the distance, and see how it goes. That's how you get a ring on easily. See? 
Double ring. There we go. Arrow facing the exhaust side. Get a little bit in here, make sure she's all sliding well and wanting to cooperate. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put this piston in here. Get over his pin bearing in. Get her piston facing the right direction at this guy. There it is. All right. Now we got a piston on it. Motor. This part can be a pain, trying to get all these rings to stay lined up while you're putting the cylinder on. It can definitely be a pain, but we'll get it done. See all those little pins right there? You want this thing centered on them. Piston up top dead center, and then start checking your Z. All right, so what we've been doing is we've been playing with our X distance. I think I called it Z distance earlier in the video. It's actually X distance. The Z distance is our distance between the top of the cylinder and the nominal point of the power valve where it sits at idle essentially. So you know, the power valve can open and close, and this can actually close a little bit more. And so we had to get it set. And there's a screw on the back here, right here, that allows you to set that. It goes through the case and it prevents this arm from going down anymore. So you put your tool in there, take your tool, put it down through the cylinder, let it hook underneath the power valve, and then you push the power valve all the way down until you know, it locks the tool in place. And then you go and you set your screw. And you push your power valve down, set your screw, that sets the distance, lock that in place, and then now you've got it set and you're good to go. And then you can go ahead and get your arm on there, get this all the way down and get your distance here set. But you shouldn't have to mess with it because it should have been set properly to begin with. Basically, you're looking for a squish clearance between zero and 0.1 is what I understand. The manual millimeters. says 0.1 millimeters, which is uh, 3.9 thousandths of an inch. So basically it's going to look like it's perfectly flush. I used one base gasket. Time to install the head. Broke out the big boy torque wrench for this one. 150 newton meters for your primary drive. 110 newton meters for your, your clutch. All right, so the only reason I'm putting this on right now is so that I can protect the inside gears and everything while I'm assembling the motor into the frame. Then I'm gonna pull it back off and tighten these down to spec because it is a pain to try and tighten this thing down without it being held into place somehow.
Yes. Uh, Motor in the frame. In the Spot about this clutch, you gotta get this wash plate centered. Delicious. <sighs> All right, getting ready to throw the gasket on there. Part number. All right, so just make sure you got all of your dowel pins. This one is in the case, so we're good. Gotta have the dowels. I wonder if this thing needs any like gasket maker on it. Nah, that's why it's a gasket. You didn't need to put Yamabon on your middle case gasket, to be honest with you. I know, but it said to. It did? Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe you did need to. There it is. That was it. That was it. Torque it down to six newton meters. Pretty much every small bolt on this bike seems like it's six newton meters. So, kind of a good rule of thumb to go with. You know, with this thing having so many gaskets, you're gonna have to go around it a couple of times to get all these bolts torqued down. You saw that it was torqued, then I got all of the other ones torqued, and then now these came out. So. Keep on going around till everything's torqued down. Boom, throttle body on. All right, going to put our injectors in. This is kind of the assembly. I like to leave it together. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of oil on these O-rings, make sure they're good, and we're gonna pop it in there. I hope y'all enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, make sure to tickle that YouTube algorithm so others can find this video more easily. I'll have one or two more videos coming out in the series here soon, and I apologize for the delay. Life has been busy this year and YouTube has taken a back seat, but I'm looking forward to getting back into making some videos more regularly here soon. Make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the series, and if you're into mountain bikes, definitely stay tuned because I'll be filming this upcoming weekend at a Beach Mountain, North Carolina for closing weekend. Should have at least three videos for that series. Much love to each and every one of you. Wrap on.